Okay, I zoom the camera in this area using a charcoal stick. I'm going to try a trick and use the side of it and the edge like that. I'm going to get some main directional marks coming in like that. See how I'm doing that? See? See how that is? And I'm not just guessing. I'm looking at the information in front of me. Overlap, but I'm going to erase that, fix that up after. We don't want to be too afraid. Now, the bottom of the nest is not this. It's actually going to be somewhere right here. It goes like this, and it goes hooks up like that. And it kind of is in alignment with that just a little bit. And this goes up like that. Okay, we're pretty much in business. Now, I just wanted to do that just to show you what you can do with the side of the charcoal and um, that kind of a thing. I, I think that this has to be bigger right there. So we're going to fix that right there. Look what we do. So look what I'm going to do right here. This kind of comes down like this. Like so. Like that. See that? And so lit up from behind a little bit and this is going to be dark there's another straw or piece of grass coming out like that but it doesn't really help the composition so I'm going to get rid of it and also this one here doesn't seem to do anything so I'm going to just get rid of it so you see how we can do that, you know, you, you can decide what you can take out and it won't ruin the integrity of a piece. It doesn't really do anything. So this here is the grass and it comes in like that and this tucks underneath the, the nest. There we go. Outline doesn't need to be there, you know, we can fix it up later. Okay, so I think that what we're going to do is we're going to go for the darker areas first. <clears throat> so there is like a shadow here because of that grass. And then there's like an area of value here. And this definitely is all gonna be much more dark. See that? And see I made these previous marks and then when I go like this, it picks up and it reinforces. You see how that gets darker? It's kind of a neat thing that I think some seasoned artists use. I tend to forget little things like that. I'm like, oh, okay. And then this, this, this goes like this, like that. That part worked pretty well. Some of the other parts were kind of chaotic, but this, this is really sailing along. And I can do some scribbling in here. See that? Well, I can't use my left hand because we won't be able to see. There we go. So if you're going to do scribbling, you might get away with it with the nest. Like I can do scribbling, you know, in other parts of the nest. But the main focus that we're doing is right here. It's kind of 
flat out what should be darker. See that? Because I'm mainly attacking the darker areas right now. And then it also involves <clears throat> dealing with what's in front of this, all those things like right here and that that piece of grass is light and it's in front of that area. And then also one coming down like that. And then this is lighter here. It kind of splits in two. But I, I don't think well it does over here. It splits it splits in two right here. So I think I'm gonna try to do it. Let's see if I can. It's good that you see me do this stuff. I think that's what these demos are all about. Is you actually get to see what's happening. See I'm doing it with the side of the charcoal, see that? See, this is that, but this is not that. See, this is something that tucks over here, but this continues like that. Now, there's something going on here. The gra a piece of grass will go like this and like that. So to fix that, I'm just going to, well, actually, let's try the chamois cloth here. There we go. And this, this could work really well in other areas. I almost forgot about this guy. Here, there's something I can pull out there. See that? The chamois cloth. See that? That wouldn't have worked with the blender or the cotton rag. But with the chamois cloth, I can pick up stuff like that. The idea is to stay focused. Like, Sometimes when you draw, you're thinking about when you're done and then what you're going to be doing with your friend or something. And, or you're thinking about food or you're thinking about something else. The idea is, you shouldn't let that happen. Like the idea is just to be in the present moment. You're focusing on this, you're drawing, and that's what you're doing. Try not to let anything else enter your mind. Okay, anyways, uh, I think this goes up here. See that? And then let's line this up better. This, this, this here is 
uh, it's, it's kind of tricking me here. I'm, so when I have a problem like this, I can't work with it, look what I do. With the chamois cloth, just get rid of it. And you're not missing anything, you see that? It's like, I don't like what's going on there, get rid of it. And so, this sort of ends right there. It's just kind of hard to see, nothing that's really is happening there. And then this one here is more of a predominant feature that comes around like this and goes up like this. And then it hooks around like this, like a ribbon, which I think is really cool. This has to be reinforced, the shadow there. There's like all sorts of shadow stuff going on here on the book from the nest, so I might have to include it. And then there's a blade of grass like this, single blade of grass. So yeah, you can see how this is coming together, huh? So I'm not doing any blending right now, just, just laying down the value, just trying to work that out. And I have to pull out with the eraser. So I'm really doing with the, the black and the white, mainly. The gray tone is already there, you see? So that's why the gray is there. So that way you can lay down the black and pull out the white. A lot of people will have a gray and then they'll pull out the white, then they'll go, go with the black, just to let you know. But I don't know why I don't do that, but that's, if you see a, a similar technique like this, they might say, hey, you know, tinted gray and then get the form drawn out and then pull out the whites and then do the darks. And I, I think that's the tradition, and I, I, for some reason, I, 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 go, I usually go for the darks. I mean, sometimes I say go for the darks, I wind up going for the lights. I tend to do that, so subconsciously, I think that is a better way to work. But in any event, we're still dealing with the dark and the lights. The gray is, is already established. It's already there. So that's why this technique is good. Now, of course, I would like to spend time with another idea, which is to draw something like this on tinted Strathmore paper. And so that gives you the gray tone. And all you do is use like black charcoal and white charcoal. And <laughs> that's it. And that's definitely a must for any serious student to do. So the thing is, I don't really do that with my beginning class because we need time to figure all this stuff out, the core stuff. And then with my more intermediate so with my intermediate students, I tend to play around with different materials. See what the chamois cloth does a great job for that particular function. And like these don't even cross over in the actual piece. I wonder, I, something must have been moved. And so, I kind of don't want that cross there. So what do we do? Well, we can say that this should be further down like this. And this should be up like this. Because that's what's going on with the real McCoy. So I'm not going to goof around. I'm going to be like, well, I can fix that. Hold on. Still pushing it around. You can see how I'm pushing it around. So you got to get the right kind of a shape. And I'm not getting it because like this 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 comes down like 
that. And it goes like this. And now we're getting it a little bit better. And this, by God, is not right. There we go. So we're getting it. And instead of working with all the inside stuff, I'm working with the negative space. Like, see, this is positive space. Now this becomes negative space in relationship to that blade of grass. So now I'm always just focusing on the surrounding stuff. I'm not even drawing the grass. I'm drawing around the grass. Get that shape established and also to get it in connection or in relationship to the rest of the drawing. That's why it's good to know what negative versus positive space is about. Okay. Getting it done. Getting it done. That part's, it's more than halfway done. Oh, oh definitely. So I'm gonna say, let's put this aside. Let's put this charcoal stick aside. Now let's, let's get the blender. This is technically called a, so now let's get the tortillon. Stick here like this. You can see how this blade of grass is over this big blade of grass, but then it tucks underneath this blade of grass. So you get that nice network of the woven, even if it's loosely woven. That's what, that whole thing is what's going on inside the nest. And that's what he keeps it together. See, like little things like this. Now we can start addressing with our pencils. Like, uh, I saw something. Oh, yeah, right here. This and, you know, these little things. Pencil comes in handy at this point. See that like that. Like that, see that? And this comes over here like this, like that.
There we go. It's making sense, I hope. So I have my blender and my compressed pencil. So I have my blender and now I'm having using my charcoal pencils. See that? There we go, see that? Boom. And I think that... This overlaps here. There we go. See that? Sorry. Yeah, I'm recording. What is that? Let's fix that right there. There we go. See that? It's not done, but it's getting better, isn't it? Let's hope it's getting better. that. Still some problems going on, but we'll fix them. We need this little blade coming out like right here. It's actually a little bit more complicated than just a simple blade of grass. There's something else going on there. Boy, is it crazy. Let's see. But we'll get it.
See this area here is not like the rest. It's very much different. It's not the same grass. It's a different kind of material. It's smaller grass. And I don't know what to call it. <laughs> it's just like smaller pieces of grass, smaller blades of grass. It's making it complicated. And I know I can hit it with the white charcoal pencil. But in the meantime, I can do this. See that? And this here. There we go. There we go. But what's that? That's just the underbelly of the nest. And there we go. And this part can be pulled like this. Okay, we're getting it. We have to do with this area like it's kind of big, but it, it doesn't ruin the drawing. It's just a little bit different from the original, that's all. So we shouldn't worry about that. If we take a look at what we have so far, I think we have something decent. But there's one problem that's standing out. And I want to show you the problem and I'm going to work on it and you can see me doing it. Right here, it stands out, it attracts my attention, and it's definitely not the focal area for the composition. So it has to go. Now the reason why is the direction that I'm picking up is, is one of the following. I'm making these arrows. See the arrows that I'm drawing? They're, it's going downward. What should happen instead is it should wrap around like this. It should curve like that into the bottom of the bird's nest, which is like a bowl. And I can't just draw it like I did this and this because we already established that there's something going on here. There's like a, um, a bundle of different type of grass or, or material that the bird used to make this bird's nest. It's not the same material as this, but it just keeps on, but this keeps on, um, attracting my attention to it. And remember what I said, if you have a, a compositional drawing or any kind of drawing and your eye goes to a certain part of the drawing that has no relevance to your you know message or to what is like the focal area and it just seems to be like a distraction then there's probably a problem with it. So I noticed that and I realized well then as I look at the bird's nest in my drawing yeah it's, it's it it doesn't seem to, to work. So let's let's um tackle that right now. And try to try to name what I'm using. I'm not going to tell you what this is. You should know what this is by now. And you should know why I'm doing this by now. I'm not going to say what I'm doing. I want you to know just by looking at what I'm doing. Because you've watched enough of my videos, hopefully, to catch on as to what I'm doing. And it's a pattern. I'm, I'm creating a pattern here since we started drawing like the primitives, right? So let's let's get to it. So to deal with this problem, I'm gonna work with what? What am I using here? What is this? And why would I do this? So I'm not gonna say anything. I want you to kind of like identify. You should know like why I'm doing these things by now.
Now why I did that, I don't know. The immediate guess is that I didn't step back enough. Uh, my face was too close to the area that I was drawing and I wasn't paying attention to the whole picture. So that's the one thing I will say, like how I could have done that mistake. But you see how, see what I'm doing so far. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing in this area. See if you can pick out why I'm doing what I'm doing based on what you've learned so far. I will say after this demo, I'll probably have to go to the art store. I'm running out of certain supplies. And Jerry's Auto Ram is pretty cool. They're in Tempe. What did I do? First of all, I discovered the problem. And I think the reason why the problem was there is because I didn't step back enough. So I recommend you step back like five feet and just look at your work and then go back and continue. So what I did was I used the chamois cloth. I didn't use the eraser to get rid of quote unquote a mistake. I used a chamois cloth. And then I tinted it, that area, with my vine charcoal. So I have what's called a mid-tone. And so that I could now use subtraction technique to make these little strokes there that represent what looks like hair. You know, if, <laughs> if you had the scarecrow from Wizard of Oz standing here and you go to his hair, it would be made of this stuff right here. While this stuff here would be the stuff that was going to make up his internal parts. You know, beneath his clothes and stuff. So anyways, so this is different than that. So what I did was I reinforced the area that was kind of, that was too white with vine charcoal to get what's called a mid-tone. And then I went in with the charcoal, well in this case I used a 4B charcoal pencil. And I attacked the dark areas again. I went straight for the dark. And then I pulled out the light with my kneaded eraser and that's it and that's what we have looks pretty good so far now we're gonna move on I also wonder if that's just too dark I did want to get the chiaroscuro and I think all I have to do is just let the viewer know that it's not an eternal black hole <laughs> you know there, there's a grass kind of popping out of there and that's all we have to do okay let's move on down to the book now I'll talk about what I'm doing I'm going to use a series of hatching and cross hatching to define the surface and even the texture of the book because there is a type of texture there similar to the, the, the grain of our paper So I'm using my dark 4B pencil and I'm hitting the dark areas first. And then I'm going to go with my eraser and pull out the highlights and then I'm going to go with my HB pencil and you know just kind of work in the, the gray areas. So let's see. Um, you know it's good to have a some type of a plan, some kind of strategy. So, so far we've established one and it seems to work pretty good. And then this is a particular way of drawing. What if we were going to do something more abstract or expressionist? What if we were going to do something more abstract or something more expressionist? You see? All sorts of things we can do. But this is a certain type of approach to drawing. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'm trying to be consistent with you all so I don't confuse the viewer with all these different kinds of things. And we could sort of plan out where I think the shadow would be. The shadow seems to creep at an angle like that. And then it there's this book cover 
that sticks out from these being the pages and so the shadow is going to be like that see that and then the shadow creeps back like like that so that's what's going on and so technically this should be in shadow like that we're getting there the Tubi pencil is good too can't wait to get to the pair but to be honest with you I'm not looking forward to those darn grapes <laughs> And that'd be a little bit of a problem, you know, I can tell you. Uh, but we did the grapes together, remember? So that's the thing, you're doing this drawing. You've already done the grapes, right? So now you have a better understanding about how to do them here. You don't want to have a situation where it's like, wow, that's a great still life, but I don't like those grapes, you know, and you go, yeah, I'm the artist. I. I had problem with the grapes and so like how do you deal with that well the idea is to do individual drawings of individual objects and as you gain understanding about certain individual objects then you can put those individual objects together in a composition like this that's one way to deal with that problem I know it's easier said than done, and I'm sometimes a hypocrite because I sometimes just get into things. I just want to do them because I'm human, just like you are. But then when I fail miserably, then I go, well, at least I have a format. I have a plan. I have a strategy that can get me back on my feet, and this is it. This is it, by golly. Now I think that that part of the book is too dark. And if I used a chamois cloth, it would lift too much charcoal. So I used my paintbrush, literally painting. I'm actually painting with charcoal. This is a form of dry painting, dry media painting. Pretty cool, eh? But we're having it. Okay, we have the book almost done. Now I want to show you this little thing. I think we recall it from doing the mark exercise, making those marks. So you see how this is kind of popping up there? There's a little bit of a bend for the actual book, but not as much. So I'm gonna come over here and shave this off like that. I might have been able to use a chamois cloth, right? But I did the eraser instead. And uh, maybe I can do that here too, just a little bit. Now you don't want to be too exact in your your edges where it's all straight for the whole thing because it's an old book. And like this looks pretty good. You got to watch out for that. You don't want it too perfect because then it looks mechanical. It looks inorganic. So be careful of that. So I want you to see that as we finish the book. And uh, there is something going on here. I might want to include it. You can actually see me do it right now. Giving it some tone. little hatching and cross hatching. I think, I think it works okay. Might be a little bit too uh, much on the light side here. And I can always go and do more in this book. Matter of fact, this, this here is way too bright. Using the HB. See how that scratches on? Couldn't do that with a 4B pencil. Couldn't do that with a 4B charcoal pencil. There we go. 
This part here looks great. It's like it's been gnawed, gnawed on a little bit because that's kind of like what's going on in the book. Yeah, let's go here like that. And we can, you know, play around with it some more. And these pages kind of go out like this. They don't go straight down. That's just how it is. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. So, like, there's something going on here. Right here there is a piece of nest. I think it's a little plant of some sort. And so I'm using my knee deed eraser to draw it in using what's called subtraction technique. See that? It just leans against the, the book like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to use my pinky over here. I feel like uh, doing that. There we go. And, of course, I can work on this some more. kind of bugs me. If something bugs you, gang, you know, go at it. Don't let it, don't let it fester. You don't want stuff to fester on your drawing. The only fester you should allow is Uncle Fester when you're watching The Addams Family. But don't let anything fester on your drawing. Get it done. If something doesn't look right, don't let it fester. Fix it. Yeah, I like how this pops out a little bit. This, this here needs to pop out like that. And then, uh, see, it's just a matter of going back and forth, being honest with yourself as much as you can to get a nice work of art, nice drawing. There we go. And let's get this over here. So I'm using uh, my charcoal pencil right now, and I, I decided to use the HB because this is such a fine-tuned little little guy right here. And if I use the charcoal any darker, it might be a little bit too clumsy in the application. So I, I'm I'm conservative about that, you know. I and I didn't want to use my charcoal stick because again, I know that I couldn't do it with the charcoal stick. I remember I said use the biggest things first. Well, I, this is, I, if anything, I need to get, get something smaller, <laughs> you know. So I'm doing fine with my choices. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I had to step back. Always step back, get proper perspective of your work. It's coming along. So we need the 2B right here. I think the HB would be a little bit hard. And we already used it now. And I think the 4B is a little bit too soft. So the 2B is just right for finishing up this little area. Now there's a little shadow. That's right, this uh, little twig. has a shadow. See that? Then it's carried over by the shadow of the grape. It's kind of weird. I think that's what that is. I know it's a shadow. Maybe it's the entire grape. Maybe, maybe the shadow is all from this grape over here. There's a grape Right here, you see that? Right here there's a grape. And that's casting a shadow there. But it looks like part of that's because of the twig. I've been known to be wrong. So, you know, let's try to get it as best as we can. Okay. We're wrapping it up. This is not done. What can we do about it? 
our best. That's what we can do about it. We're gonna come over here and a little nodule there. See that? A little nodule. And it's not all lit up like that. For instance, this part here, uh -huh, that's because it's a cast shadow. There's a shadow from this grape that's invisible on there. And over here there's something of a tone. And those two little things really, really help the believability of that little guy. And then there's like a shadow here, like a secondary shadow coming down here. See that? Now it's close to done. And what's gonna happen is when I hit it with my white charcoal in certain areas, voila, it's gonna be really cool. So now let's hold off on this. And now there's still more stuff here that I wanna do. It's not really to my liking here, but it's nothing I have to start all over on. Now we're gonna go and hit the grapes. Grape ape, let's do it. So there's two ways to attack these grapes. We have, we have the mid-tone. We can either do the dark parts first or the highlights. And for some reason, I like doing the dark parts first. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here and I think I'm gonna start with the leaf. There's like this leaf over here going on. Now before I do the leaf, I should do what's around the leaf. You see that? Don't come in here until you deal with all this, this whole area. The things surrounding the thing that you want to do. Like I wanna do this, right? Before I do that, check off everything surrounding it first. That's a very important thing. And that's what we're gonna do. So and see how we do it. You'll see how I do it. There we go. What's funny is I gotta really define this shape here to confirm the leaf. So it's close to perfect, but not by a long shot perfect. Let's see. That's a pretty interesting saying. What's close to perfect is not by a long shot. Kind of interesting, right? Anyways, we'll, we'll do what we can. Now with this thing here, I'm going to use my 2B pencil when I come in. And it's, 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 there's a sense of roundness to it. You'll see what I mean. Like a scroll. It's round like a scroll. Kind of like, so I'm gonna really get, work that in here. So I have to use what's called the wrapping technique. See that? And I'm getting the information from what I'm, what I'm looking at. See that? It's already coming along. So you can see that I hit the dark parts first. Now the light areas pop out like a, like a, like a monster, you know? Like this right here is supposed to be reflected like, but man, it's glowing like all hell. And then this here is pretty light. But you see, I think that's how you do it. It's a good way to do it. Now what I'm gonna do is switch over to my HB, just for now, just so you can see how to do this. So I, you know, you gotta, you just can't golf with a five iron. So I'm picking up a different. So let's do the lit up region here and then the reflected light area. Now what's happening here is this part of the leaf here, the under part is lit up even more so. So we'll work on that separately. Right now we're over here.
a little tear on the leaf right here. That's right, I can see that. I got that in there. Yes, sirree, Bob. And it's really weird. That reflective light is so intense. It's just as bright as the area that's lit up. It's crazy. But it's not, not brighter, so i got to tone it down just a little bit. See that? That's the uh, leaf action there. There is a prominent feature that's not showing up in my drawing. Let me get that sucker in here right now. There we go. Little thing, but it's a big thing. The little big things will make or break your drawing. It's the little big things. So it looks like a leaf. Then you have to know when it's time to leave it alone. See that? Now let's go in for the grapes. You know what's really weird is down here, there's nothing there in my drawing. But in real life, you know what's there? There's this whole thing is a dark region of a leaf. That's right, this whole thing is a leaf. And the problem is, notice how it's up against the edge of the paper. And that, that makes me wonder if I should try to draw all the way to the end of these two sides. And I might want to do that to show you a different way where your drawing bleeds to the paper's edge. And what's cool is, but not the top and the bottom, you know, maybe we can do that. I don't know how that will look, but we can try it, right? Let's see what we do. So maybe in the end, that's what we're gonna have. Now remember, we didn't have to do that. I can go, I can go and pull this out with my eraser, I can go and remove all that out with my eraser. I can do that. I have the freedom to do that. It won't ruin anything. So that's up to us. That's up to you. That's up to me. We are the dream makers. All right. So let's let's go for it. And it's just a dark region because then what happens, the leaf uh, kind of folds like that. Now, I do see, you know, some veins in there, like uh, something there. So I'm going to try to draw it in there. See, I'm not going to chintz on on you people. I'm going to make I'm gonna make this what I want it to be. But I'm not making a demo of something that's just throwaway art. Like, I'm actually making something that I'm actually going to be proud of. And, and that's what we're doing here today. This is like a misshapen grape. <laughs> we'll be able to fix it as we be going here. So let's just uh, move in with the 2B pencil. Let's get these grapes going. Mm. I'm gonna go from the, I don't know which one to start first. I'm gonna, this area is bugging me. So I wanna do the, the problem child. I'm gonna try with the old chamois cloth. Little, little, little need of attention there. Pretty good. Some of you might want to hit that with vine charcoal and then go in with the 2B. But I'm just going to go in with the 2B. To be or not to be. That is the question. Here we go. I go back with my angles, like the school of design technique. There we go, see that? And then I'm going to work on this guy by surrounding it with what's around it in tone. So I define the shape of that little guy. 
And now that I like it, I can come right in here and actually draw the bugger. Definitely not done. But let's finish it. Let's like uh, take one grape and make it an example. The only thing I won't do is uh, hit it with the white charcoal. So we kind of know what we're doing, right? Remember how these grapes are? The core shadow, the highlight, the reflected light. And also these things are transparent. Real grapes have that that high concentration of water in there. And if you were to squeeze it, you'd get your face a little wet, right? So it's knowing about the anatomy of your subject, you know, what's going on inside, eh, it's extremely important. You know, this is where you might be able to do circular motions. You know, I always say don't go circular motions, but maybe, you know, there's always a, an exception to a rule, you know. And I think this might be it. These buggers are not easy to do. So we're getting it, we're getting it, we're getting it, we're getting it, we're getting it. Bang. It's a little bit like on the lighter side. Let's uh, hold off and do another grape. <laughs> Let's do this area right here. Tone it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's do that. Let's hit it with the TV. Well, I wonder. I heard somebody say, why not try the HP? Okay, I'll do the HP. Thank you. So this grape is on top of this grape. And this grape goes like this. So that's the tone that we need. We don't want any darker than that, really. Not for these grapes. And that's the thing, folks. The reason why is because these are supposed to be trans they are transparent. They are transparent. That's why they're not going to be as black as that black, you see? I think that was the problem. So let's get down right here. Bang. Here we go. Thick outline. I don't know if that should be there. I don't see it. That won't last. There we go. And like what the, what's going on here is, this is another grape. This form here is just another grape on top of the one that we are drawing. See that? So I had to do that. Now remember, we have to know when the grape stops and when the leaf starts. Well, I have to use my 2D for that. Remember, to draw this, we have to deal with what's going around it. That's such a huge lesson there. That's a big point that we have to make. Let's go like that. There you go. Let's see that thing. There we go, like that. Excellent. Kind of hucks in like that. That's it. So we know that that's the leaf and that's the grape. still be a little bit too dark but it's much better you know it's not as dark put it that way so I got these two grapes and let's see what's going on behind that ah, there's this grape right here
Not to draw this great, but to draw that. Look around there, what's going on with that? So this one, I'm going to pull that out just a little bit. Just make sure it's, it's right here, it's defined right. This ball, this grape here looks like a ball, literally, like a little green beach ball. So I'll just do that with it right now. See how that's just not clear? You gotta really get that clear before you draw what's in question. Okay, we're right here, huh? Yeah, it's really hard to do these grades because the I have to be in an awkward position to draw them. Kind of a pain in the butt. Let's see, bend at the knees might help. Okay, but then I know that this has to be done. I'm glad it has a highlight because it just makes it cooler right there. There's this highlight peeking out right there like that. Pretty cool. The 15 minutes that Nixon cut out. There we go. 15 whole minutes. Oh my god. Let's see. And I'm telling you, the best advice is to pay attention to the details. And try to draw them in. Like, there's something really going on with that grape. It's so cool. I might do like a couple more of these grapes here up to this here and then I'm going to stop the camera and then finish up the grapes and we'll move on to the pear. See this shape of this right there? That's a grape. And this one covers it, overlaps it, and this, this is underneath it like that. See that? And then this is a part of that grape. Now that little window there, I have to, if I move my head a little bit, then I get it. And, and that's going to be just dark like the book in shadow. Thank God for that because I was kind of worried. It wasn't making any sense. That little thing is such a big thing. You see how that works. I'm actually like at great bends like that. I'm getting it too dark, darn it. I think that's okay. I can get away with that. There we go. Step back a little bit. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit hit it with my pinky. Pinky. HB. Let's try this one over here now. Almost, almost. Okay. Now this one here is interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on with it. It's all funky. Yeah, let's see.
It's really weird. There's a highlight behind the grape. That's not the grape. That's behind the grape. And I don't know if I should even draw it in there. And this grape has a highlight there. It's really cool, actually. So you get these little things that happen that, wow, you can never predict on your own just from your pure imagination. You know, you look at real life and you go, whoa, life could be stranger than fiction, which is cool. Because you see the highlight, but you don't see the grape. Seriously, I don't see the grape. It's, it's hidden behind the leaf. The leaf here, you know. It's amazing. I hope I'm not in the way. Uh, oh. There we go. Let's get in there. One of the darkest grapes of the bunch. The highlight is secondary to the others. It's not as bright. But it still has a highlight. Per se. So let's get that in here right here. There we go. That's nice. Now I'm going to try to use my blender to draw on this grape. I haven't thought about that. Might not even work. I don't know if any of you are thinking that, like, yeah, you could use a blender to draw this grape. And you're right, I might be able to steal a little bit from here and come in here like that. Let's try a couple more like that. I got the highlight wrong. <laughs> so you see that? So now the highlight. Oh man, I got my support my hand. Yeah, this is really awkward. Can't wait to get over here because it's not as far from... Let's see. Okay, we got it. Highlight. Highlight come in right now. Let's see that right here. Like that. Yeah, that highlight. And then there's like just the far end of the grape from the inside. <laughs> That's the highlight of the inside of the grape, the inner wall of the grape. And that's the highlight showing that this is a plastic grape. <laughs> Real grapes don't have it as much. They have the highlight floating in the middle of the grape on top of the, they have the highlights somewhere in the middle of the grape, but the real highlight is on top of the, you know, on the, on the surface of the grape. But this is at the other end, far end from the inside wall. <laughs> I'm doing like two grapes at a time right now. I'm going to try to do three grapes at a time and then hit it with the highlight. And that might be an interesting strategy. Let's try that. That might be your, uh, your, your style, your approach. Do all the grapes like this with your HB and then come in with your, your highlight after. I just kind of want to see, a, see it as I go. You know, I'll just want to do that. But we'll, let's bang these out like this right now. See, we're getting, we're modeling. Giving it three-dimensional form. Transforming the two-dimensional shape into a three-dimensional form by modeling.
And this is where I'm doing a bunch of grates at a time. It's crazy, huh? So you kind of get in the flow. You might be able to do that. I didn't do that at all with my uh, my initial grape demo, did I? It's kind of neat. Well, let's put the highlight and then go back with some dark. I kind of want to see where we got at this point. <clears throat> okay. Some really cool things going on here. I might be in the way. I just I can't help it. It's, my body's hurting. Being all contorted. Okay, and then uh. Now, I'm not guessing, I'm looking at the grapes and really trying to put this together. Still too mechanical. Let's go back in and fix it. 